gentlemen, it's time for the Mystery Hour, and here is your host, Mystery Jeff Hoda! That's all a clapping track. <laughs> There's nobody here. <laughs> hey, thank you guys for watching at home. We have an amazing show for you guys tonight. We have DJ P, the winner of the Master of the Mix on BET. Yeah, you can clap for that. You can clap for that. We also have the music of Nate Frederick. Uh-huh. <laughs> And through a generous donation from Andrew Baird and Stephanie Stanger Montgomery, our nonprofit title sponsor tonight is the Moxie Cinema. We love the Moxie. Yeah, we do. Everyone does. Everyone does. We love them so much that we made a commercial for them. Check it out. Tanya? He's done it. It's alive. Uh, it's alive. Oh, John. Oh. Huh. Seen this one. Guy dies at the end. Uh, it's alive. Oh, John. Huh. Seen this oh. one. Guy dies at the end. Uh, it's alive. Huh. Oh, John. Seen this one. Oh. Guy dies at the end. Moxie. Yeah. Yeah. There were no sound effects added to that. She's a tough little girl. Uh, one of the things that we love here at the Mystery Hour, besides building windows into the set, which I'm pretty excited about, is Missouri. We think Missouri is awesome. Uh, have a look. Hi, I'm Jeff, and I'm from Missouri. You may think that Missouri is boring or full of hillbillies or lacking of culture. You're probably thinking of Arkansas, because Missouri is awesome. Missouri is known for an abundance of wildlife. Run away, girl. Missouri has the highest number of people named Terry per capita. Hey, Terry. They say the happy cows come from California. This cow looks pretty happy to me. Missouri's chief export is handsome movie stars, including this guy, this guy, <laughs> even this guy. Want to find out what's happening underneath you? You can in Missouri. Missouri's known as the cave state. Not only are these caves great, they're also fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Missouri is so awesome that cities from other states want to move here. We got your application, Orlando. The southeast corner of the state is shaped in a boot heel, much like the boot shape of Italy. That's not the only thing we have in common. You don't know where Missouri is? It's right here. It's mostly right here. Missouri is known for its beautiful outdoors and waterways and cities. They say everything's bigger in Texas. Not this rocking chair. Hey, Terry. <laughs> Missouri is known as the show me state. Why? Is it because first governor Alexander McNair was known around the state as a prolific flasher? Yes. Yes, it is. Missouri has a number of breweries, both large and small, including one in St. Louis known as the king of the beers. I'm Jeff. And I'm here in Missouri, known as the gateway to the West, or as we like to say, the gateway to awesome, because Missouri is awesome. How do you like them apples? <laughs> oh, yeah. 
went into that first apartment. Missouri is awesome. Yeah. I'm so glad we paid extra for that clapping track. I don't know if clapping track is a thing. Laugh track, right? Clapping track, that's probably a thing. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, someone just hit the button right now. This is my son. Um, now it's time to move on to something I was supposed to do before the Missouri is Awesome video. Things I've noticed! These things I've noticed. These things I've noticed, yeah. Yeah. These things I've noticed. These things I've noticed, yeah. Yeah. These things I've noticed. These things I've noticed, yeah. Yeah. Look at that graphic. I made this noise while I did that. You never want someone to make that noise while they're touching you. <laughs> Let's do these. I've noticed that if you asked me how I would rate my skills in statistics, I'd give myself an A out of 10. I've noticed that it would be hard to explain to someone that you are addicted to female heroes without that person trying to get you into rehab. <laughs> I'm addicted to heroines. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I like the ones no one gets. Okay. I've noticed that it's hard to get a birthday card for someone whose sense of humor you respect. I've noticed that Netflix should have a category called Movies I've Heard Of. <laughs> I've noticed that long time no she is what I would say to my friend who is a transvestite but hasn't dressed like it for a while. <laughs> just weird. That one's just weird. And finally, I've noticed that a face covered in shaving cream is the best way to feel like your teeth are bright yellow. That's things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. Yeah. I put it on the bookshelf. Hey, we're going to head to a commercial break, but stick around because we have DJP coming up next. We'll be back. Welcome back, everybody. I'm sitting on a pillow on my chair. <laughs> I just am. There's no reason to tell you that. It's because the desk is appropriately large. Hey, we're going to move on to our guest tonight. Our guest tonight is brought to you by <laughs> The Skinny Improv. The Skinny Improv is an improvisational comedy theater that has a tagline that says something like, laugh more. I didn't prepare for that one. <laughs> All right, our guest tonight is the winner of the Master of the Mix competition on BET. He's known around the United States as one of the best DJs in the country. Give it up for Mr. DJ P. Hey. How are you? Hello. Have a seat, sir. Thank you. Thank you. This mine? That's yours. Oh, great. Wow, how's everybody doing? Are Is you it? used to a crowd? No, as a matter of fact, well, you know when I'm, I'm behind turntables, I am. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm hyperventilating right now. Because you're not behind yeah, turntables? Yeah, I'm not used to like, you know, when you get up in front of a crowd and you're just kinda like, 
you're in your own world and you know what you're doing and you're comfortable with it. I've never yeah. been on a talk show where I'm sitting here and answering questions, but take if a few deep breaths. Better, I'm very uncomfortable too. Well, that's good. <laughs> now, the most uncomfortable I've ever been, though, was probably doing the TV show because you never know what they're going to throw at you next. And the master not, of the mix. They don't know how you're going to, yeah, you don't know. You're mic'd, and you never know when they're recording you, and you got to really be careful what you're going to say, even behind, how you feel about certain people. and They want that. Yeah, they want that. So, yeah. But, yeah, but they don't want you to talk really bad about them either. Just yeah. an appropriate yeah. level of bad? Yeah, I'm talking about the people on, in production. I'm not talking about the people oh. on the show. Just, yeah, Because <laughs> they can hear you. Things, but yeah, yeah. But yeah. Anyway, I'm yeah. not hyperventilating now. You make me very comfortable. Good, good. <laughs> Maybe it's in the water. What did you put in here? <laughs> what did you put in here? It is water. No. It's not, it's not water. No. no. Like Absolutely it. not. Anyway. <laughs> but, uh, no, I've never done anything like this. This is great. Yeah. Awesome. I, this is probably the um, biggest TV show you've been on. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and, and in my hometown. Right, yeah. and in your hometown, yeah. because you are from Springfield. I am. What high school did you go to? Central. Central. Yep. The Bulldogs. The Bulldogs, yep, Central Bulldogs. And um, how do you start, how do you go from, I'm just a regular, wait, what does P stand for? Phillips, it's my last name. Oh, that's easy. Middle name's James, first name's Danny. It's my initials, actually, DJP is my initials. Oh, that's easy? Yeah, there you go. You were made for this. Yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> Wow. Because it could have been something else. And yeah. Like you know. F-O-G, you'd be a weatherman. There you go. <laughs> or it could have been B-N-S-F, because that's what it was in the beginning, if you know what that stands for. Burlington Northern, Northern Santa Fe. Railroad, yeah. Uh, you know it. <laughs> that, that was, yeah, that was my first real job, besides washing dishes, dishes at Trotter's. Trotters. And, uh, What's that? Was, that was, this it was, was a barbecue like, place. You guys yeah. remember Trotters? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I did that. I did that uh, right out of high school, and then um, I had a passion for music and DJing, and uh, it led to me touring with MTV, the band 311, Garbage, Lit, opening for Ice T. Um, I was uh, the resident DJ at the MGM Grand in Studio 54 for two years. That's no, wait, three wait, years. Wait, what years? Um, I got 2005. Oh, 2000. I, I was the resident DJ in 2001, 2004. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I never saw your picture back there, and I never heard your name, but okay. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah, go yeah. with that. But how do you go from, like, I'm just a guy who likes doing this to, like, I, I just wonder how people go from that to, now I'm super successful. It just you happens. Have, you had breaks along the way? It just happens. Like, the passion for doing it is what made it happen like yeah. you don't even think about what do I need to do to, to be big what do I need to do to be successful doing this it's the, the love and the passion of you doing it and sticking with it yeah. and staying persistent with, with it and the things just come yeah you know I got a phone call right here in Springfield uh, in 1999 from MTV because yeah. they they had seen me do a DJ battle in Lawrence Kansas and that's what really sparked it all they they New York came to Lawrence I went and got in the battle and yeah. they were like who's this crazy kid yeah. <laughs> so then, then um, there was a call to the company that was doing the battles uh, from MTV asking for a DJ to tour with the band Garbage and Lit. And uh, they said, you need to get DJP out of Springfield, Missouri. And they thought they were crazy. They were like, <laughs> Springfield, Missouri, you know, aren't you going to give us some of these bigger name DJs from uh, right. New York? And they're like, no, no, no. And, you know, they, they said this guy's got a different style of mixing and what, is, that, what would you say, what is your style? Because I don't even know how it works. You got the well, records, you're doing this, you do this a lot. Oh, yeah. You got to, you got to, yeah. Yeah. Why, do they, why are you doing that, though? You got to you hear the, the song in your headphones. When, what you're listening to is what's getting ready to happen. You've it's, got a song. it's before it? Yes. It's the peekaboo switch, is what they used to call it. Grandmaster Flash, if you know who that is. He called that the peekaboo switch, and it was put on a mixer. And what would happen is... You have two turntables. You've got one record playing, and everyone's dancing and listening to that. But you've got to cue that other record up in your headphones while listening to this record out of your monitor speaker to bring it in on beat yeah. with this. And time that's all timing. 
and some of the best DJs were drummers, and I was a drummer. Okay. So it, it kind of, because it's all phrasing and timing is all it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's the same with comedy. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Neither would I. <laughs> um, now you have a... You're opening a DJ school. Yes, right here in Springfield. Nice. I decided. Yeah. yeah. I want to. I want to teach the art form to to other to other kids or adults that want to really see and get their hands on it and, and learn how to do this craft. Um, I've been touring for years. I've been a DJ for 25 years. Yeah. And I just want to. I want to like share it. I want kids to learn what I've learned and and get into it. Yeah. And, and teach it from vinyl, because. You everybody's computer, everybody's on this computer thing now, and everybody's learning virtual DJ, and they're on their iPhones trying to DJ, and that's really what murdered it for guys like me that were doing this, making a living. You've got kids now that everybody's a DJ. If you've got a computer mm -hmm. and you don't have to buy the music now, the records they stop pressing a lot of dance music. Oh yeah. With the kind of music that it's kind of weird how it happened because in the '80s, if you remember the late '80s, they stopped making records. To where if you went to, well, if you went to Walmart or places like that, you didn't see records anymore. Well, all went yeah. to CD. Uh -huh. What you don't realize is, is that they kept making records, but it was all the hip-hop and the dance music that DJs needed oh, yeah. to play in discos and, and clubs. And huh. that's what kept it alive. And now it's DJs have turned their backs on it and went digital, and they download everything, and they're not paying for their music. So the people that are keeping vinyl alive now are your average guy that wants a Beatles record that he remembered having when he was a kid. So they're yeah. repressing all the classic rock now or the indie rock stuff. It's really weird how that happened because like hip hop artists like Lil Wayne or some of these new groups, they don't put that on record anymore because the DJs don't really want that. One, to me yeah. personally, a lot of that's garbage, the new stuff. <laughs> but two, they're, you know, they're, it really is. <laughs> I mean, it's my opinion, but I grew up listening to hip hop. I grew up listening to dance music right here in Springfield. I mean, yeah. I'll just put it out there. I'm, I'm 40 years old. You know, I was born in 73. So, you know, I, I grew up listening to stuff when it, it was more pure. It, it, it mm -hmm. made sense, you know. It, yeah. it, and now it's, it's, it's really weird how all that transition you know, went rattling on. Speaking so. of selling out. What's that? We have to go to a commercial. Oh, okay. Because. We're the ones selling Let's out. Let's do it. Thank you, DJP. We'll be back with the music of Nate Frederick. Stay where you are. Tonight's musical guest is brought to you by the Mud House. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. Nothing happened here while you were away. <laughs> hey, we have a great musician here tonight. Give it up for Mr. Nate Frederick. Nate. Came. 
We felt the love, the hope was there. We smiled and knew we had to share all the things we learned about our lives. And we danced in the moonlight and we sang in the rain. Cause this life is what we've been looking for. We're so glad that I finally we danced in the moonlight and we sang in the rain. Cause this life is what we've been looking for. Bum voyage to the world that we knew. Bum voyage to the world that we knew. Bum voyage to the world that we knew. And we danced in the moonlight and we sang in the rain. Cause this life is what we've been looking for. We're so glad. We're so glad. Set out to the sea. I set out to the sea. I set out to the sea with me. We set out to the sea. Set out to the sea. We set out to the sea with me and we danced in the moonlight and we sang in the rain cause this life is what we've been looking for we're so glad that it finally came Hey, that's all we have time for tonight, everyone. Just so you know, 10% of the box office proceeds tonight go to the nonprofit Moxie Cinema. Thank you guys so much. Coming up next is another TV show, probably.